To better understand how file format and file size affect the performance of querying and analyzing data, we're going to look into a simplified example of IoT data journey from transmission into data analytics. And today, this example is highly used in factories when they want to mitigate issues and save on expenses by attaching sensors that can help us help them later monitoring everything that happens in the factory, also make data decision, uh, data driven and decision based on that by running some analytics and using tools such as machine learning to extract insights. And one of the prominent uh, examples is valve monitoring and valve management, where we can collect events from all valves in the, in the, in the factory uh, and later on analyze uh, their behavior and what happened with them. This is the good side of the things. The challenging side is often it, this is results in a huge amount of data. And since we want to be able to respond relatively fast or to have ad hoc queries that run fast, we want to make sure our data systems is designed for it. So for this demo, uh, I already mimicked IoT event data that is ingested into our system with structured streaming. And we're going to test out two different storage formats and evaluate how they work. So in the factory, imagine that I have my measure and control, and my measure and control is con constantly sending events, a telemetry stream, into my analytics platform, into my data warehouse, where later inside the data warehouse, the data is being extracted, processed, organized, uh, enriched uh, with other enterprise data or external database in order for us to extract insights uh, and, and run analytics on top of it. Uh, for capturing the telemetry for data analytics, you can use tools such as Apache Kafka, which is scalable uh, and highly available as well. Uh, so it can really help you uh, capture uh, high throughput of data. The challenge is each event can have its own small JSON file uh, that is being captured. And to run the performance evaluation on these JSON files, we're going to mirror the data that was captured from tools such as Apache Kafka into parquet format and Delta format. So in order to do so, I created two different uh, Spark uh, readers, read streams, and two different write streams. One of the writes is going to read the data and write it into Parquet, and the second one is going to write it into Delta Lake format. In the file itself, I have my events, uh, my schema. Uh, it has event ID, it has event name, it could be failed or open or any of such, and I have event time. Very simple, uh, very simple example of the data. Using Hive that is already built in into my Azure Databricks environment, I'm going to create a new table from the Parquet location. So here I'm creating, if not exist, I'm creating a database and I'm creating table 01, which is from a Parquet format and I'm specifying the location. The second table is going to be a Delta table, uh, specifying a Delta format and location. And just to make sure I, uh, you know, there's no data duplication or no data got lost. I want to make sure they have the same amount of rows in each table. And I already know I generated 110 files, so there should be 110. And like you can see, there's 110 in the Perquet and in the Delta table. All right, now I want to see how long it takes me to query that table. So I'm going to run two identical queries uh, that's going to select event name and event time. The only one thing that difference is I'm going to query that one. I'm going to run that query uh, once from the Perquet and the second time from the Delta table. So running the Perquet one, and this one took me 1.56 seconds to uh, to finish. And now I'm going to run my Delta one, and that one took 0 0.90 seconds. All right. So the Delta one is already faster. I wonder if that's the case, or there's something I can do about it. Um, 
So for that, and you already know about it, we can use the Hive Optimize command uh, that helps me optimize the layout of Delta Lake del Delta. Uh, so I'm going to use Optimize and the Z order one. Let's run the Z order. Save some space and, and uh, on the data. And let's see what's happening. Num of file added, one num of file remove 101. So what happened behind the scenes, my optimized query combined a couple of small files into one file. And the couple of small files is actually 101 files that were removed in one file that was added. You know, they're already addressing the issue of small files. All right. Can we optimize parquet table file? I mean, is optimized query can run on parquet? And unfortunately, the answer is no. Analysis exception, delta table not found. It means it's only possible with the delta format. I can run this optimization with the delta format. Um, OK. So after I optimized, after I did, I deleted 101 files and I uh, combined it into one file for my, my Delta Lake storage. Now I want to see if it even, you know, if it made any change, what, what change in, in the performance wise. So Parquet table took 1.1 seconds and my Delta Lake table is taking 0.81 seconds. So yeah, definitely some change. Let's run it again and see what's happening. I know in the Delta Lake there should be, uh, the caching mechanism should be kicked in at some point. So let's see what's happening with the optimization here. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely more prominent, 0.74 seconds. Yes, so running the Hive optimization by combining all these 101 files into one file and then adding the caching mechanism uh, that Delta provide really helped with improving the run query. It's almost, yeah, it's, it's half the time of what the Parquet query takes. So. Delta table wins in our case.